Good morning. Thank you for being here. I know it's a little challenging probably getting through traffic on uh, May Day, so I very much appreciate everybody um, uh, uh, coming here on short notice. I know that uh, Supervisor Breed will be uh, joining us, but I'm very happy to be joined by Supervisor Aaron Peskin, former Supervisor David Campo, San Francisco Labor Council uh, President Mike Casey, Anand Singh, head of uh, Local 2, the Hotel and Restaurant Workers Union, Doug Engman, Calvin Welch, and others of uh, Share Better uh, San Francisco. I know we also have Janan New from the Apartment Association, Kevin Carroll from the Hotel uh, Council, and other representatives from tenant groups uh, as well. Uh, we're here for a, a, uh, a very, very good purpose, and I'm very happy to be joined here by uh, some folks from my office who have been tireless uh, in their work that brought us to announce uh, the settlement that we're, that we're here to announce today. Uh, number uh, one is Sarah Eisenberg, who did uh, virtually all the negotiating that resulted in uh, the, work, the work that we're here to celebrate today. Yvonne Murray from my office, head of the Affirmative and Complex team. Jim Emery, who did uh, uh, yeoman's work assisting Sarah Eisenberg, as well as uh, Molly Alarcon, who all did great work in negotiating the settlement that we're here to announce today. As many of you know, short-term rentals were prohibited in the city and county of San Francisco for years because the city knew the value of having homes available for long-term residents. Thereafter, however, San Francisco's Board of Supervisors took the step of legalizing short-term rentals with certain restrictions in 2014 in recognition of a burgeoning underground economy of short-term rentals occurring throughout the city. The board found that occasionally renting out a spare room or your home while you're out of town could help some people make ends meet in an increasingly expensive city. Starting in February 2015, residents were required to follow common sense rules designed to prevent landlords from evicting tenants to create full-time hotels. The rules include that only permanent residents can rent out their homes. They can only list one property, their primary residence, and they can rent out the entire unit a maximum of 90 days per year. To ensure compliance, people are required to register with the city. Our rules are modest, common sense, and fair. They're designed to strike a balance. Unfortunately, what we have seen is that many people were not following the law. Therefore, in June of 2016, the Board of Supervisors amended the law to ensure that hosting platforms like Airbnb and HomeAway themselves follow the requirements or face fines of up to $1,000 for every unregistered host who rented out property on their platform in violation of the law. Those two companies promptly sued San Francisco a United States District Court to invalidate our law. They argued that because they conduct their business online, they were exempt from any regulation of their commercial transactions. In November, Judge James Donato rejected their main arguments and directed all parties to engage in mediated settlement talks to sort out an effective registration verification system for enforcement to start. I'm pleased to tell you that we succeeded in accomplishing that goal and more. We have protected San Francisco's short-term rental law in court and this morning, we signed a settlement agreement ending the federal lawsuit that Airbnb and HomeAway had filed against San Francisco. With today's settlement agreement, all sides have agreed on a system to ensure compliance with the law. The settlement agreement does three main things. It dismisses the legal challenge to San Francisco's short-term rental law. It makes it easier for people to register and get right with the law. And it better protects the city's housing supply. To do this, the agreement includes a number of groundbreaking terms. Right now, a San Franciscan looking to rent out their home short term is legally required to register in person at the city's office of short term rentals and get a registration number. They also have to get a San Francisco business registration certificate from the treasurer and tax collector's office. Nevertheless, they've been able to list rentals on these websites without having taken these required steps. Currently, there are only 2,100 registered short-term rental hosts in San Francisco, but Airbnb alone has well over 8,000 listings in the city. That is ending with this settlement. First, this agreement makes it easier for legitimate hosts to do the right thing and register with this city. Airbnb and HomeAway will be able to use a pass-through registration system on their sites that sends individuals' registration application directly to the Office of Short-Term Rentals for consideration. 
They'll have to provide the same information, but instead of having to go in person to register with the city, they can register right from Airbnb's or HomeAway's site. Second, San Francisco hosts will no longer be able to list on either Airbnb or HomeAway without inputting their city registration number or application pending status. Third, Airbnb and HomeAway will also provide the city's Office of Short-Term Rentals with a monthly data set of all San Francisco listings to prevent someone from gaming the system. The list will include sufficient information to allow the city to verify that the unit is in fact registered. Fourth, Airbnb and HomeAway will deactivate listings and cancel future stays after receiving notice from the city of any invalid registration. This settlement ensures that the two largest rental platforms in San Francisco will only include legal listings and that the city has the tools for quick and effective enforcement. If these companies fail to police the listings on their platform, they themselves will be directly and financially liable for their failure in addition to their hosts. This is a game changer. This settlement also guarantees that enforcement with real teeth will begin in short order after a phase in period. Over the first 120 days, the technical work will be completed, allowing the companies and the city's databases to communicate. Existing hosts will be phased in over several months to ensure a smooth transition for both them and enforcement staff. Listings linked to suspected bad actors, such as those who evicted tenants using the Ellis Act to turn their apartments into vacation rentals, will be prioritized for compliance. The process will take a few months, but everyone must be registered by the end of 240 days. We've crafted this agreement to give people enough time to comply with the rules and to make it easier for them to follow the law. It's not fair to law-abiding hosts if they have to compete with cheaters. Now they won't have to. We are working hard to turn the tide on San Francisco's housing crisis. This settlement protects our neighborhoods and will help prevent our precious housing stock from being illegally turned into hotels at the expense of evicted or displaced tenants. There is no room for that in San Francisco. We understand that for a growing number of San Franciscans, it is tough to make ends meet. Renting out a spare room or occasionally renting out their home while they're out of town helps. We get that. But for those who turn badly needed rent control units into vacation spots, that is coming to an end once and for all. I'm pleased that Airbnb and HomeAway decided that fighting San Francisco's common sense regulations when not, was not in anyone's best interest. This agreement ensures that these companies will play by the rules, it makes it simpler and more convenient for their users to follow the law, and it makes our enforcement more effective. The U.S. District Court will retain jurisdiction throughout implementation to ensure that any disputes can be resolved quickly. And I'm very glad that Supervisor Breed is here as well. Thank you for coming, Supervisor. I want to thank all of those who helped us get to this point, including former Supervisor David Campos, whose legislation last summer strengthened our law requiring that hosting platforms do business with law-abiding hosts. Supervisor Aaron Peskin, who was a co-sponsor of that legislation and worked with us tirelessly during the course of uh, this settlement negotiation. And Board President London Breed, who has stepped up and recognized that uh, responsible regulation of home hosting platforms is something that the board has to be vigilant uh, in its regulation of. And I should point out one other thing, is that um, looking at this settlement, uh, one thing should be clear to everybody, that this doesn't ha tie the hands of the Board of Supervisors at all. Uh, and in the future, they have the ability to propose additional legislation see, uh, uh, if they see fit. So I think this is a, 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 a good settlement for everybody. We're happy with the result. We're happy for uh, renters and tenants. And I think this is gonna be, uh, put San Francisco on the road to be a model for uh, effective regulation of home hosting uh, platforms. And with that, I'd like to have a few people say a few words. First, the author of this legislation, uh, Supervisor David, former Supervisor David Campos. Thank you, City Attorney Herrera, and to City Attorney Herrera and his amazing staff, uh, congratulations. It seems like they're on a roll. First Donald Trump, uh, now Airbnb. Uh, you know, there is a sense of vindication as I look around this room, and you see this really uh, unique coalition of uh, the Tenants Union, uh, the Apartment Association, Labor, Hotels, 
so many people that came together in a very unprecedented way. And there is a sense of indication that we have because it was essentially three years ago that we said at that time, the law that is being passed, which was written by Airbnb, is not going to work because there is no skin in the game in terms of enforcement by Airbnb or any of the other platforms. And that's why this common sense legislation that simply said, if you're going to require registration, then you, there has to be a registration number connected to the transaction. That law made sense to us, and Airbnb and others fought us. And kudos to the San Francisco City Attorney's Office, because they did what we could not do at the ballot box that we had a tough time doing in this building. Uh, thank God for the judicial system, uh, which protected not only uh, the housing stock of San Francisco, but the many people that are being uh, kicked out of this city. And in a neighborhood like the Mission, like the one that I represented, where you had hundreds of people uh, that were evicted and at the same time hundreds of units being placed uh, in the short-term rental market. So we have uh, a, a great day today, a reason to celebrate, and it's only fitting that it's you know May Day as we celebrate working people in this country. Uh, and I only have one thing to add, and this is to my former colleagues on the Board of Supervisors. For this settlement to be effective, to really get to the kind of compliance that we need, uh, a lot of responsibility is placed on the Office of Short-Term Rentals. And so before this budget process is completed, I do think that I hope that this board and the mayor that add the resources to that office to make sure that there is full compliance. The city attorney, it's, you know, he did his job. Now it's time for this agency to actually live up to the promise when it was created. So thank you very much. Again, congratulations, and I'm very proud to be here with uh, my co-author, Supervisor uh, Aaron Peskin. So let me concur in all of the thank yous uh, both to the community, Airbnb and HomeAway have done something that no elected official could do, which is to get these disparate forces on the same page uh, for the right reason. Uh, and let me also concur and say that this settlement is a decisive victory for San Francisco, but it is much larger than San Francisco because Airbnb has filed similar lawsuits all across the state. And I expect that these types of settlements will be entered into in Santa Monica and other communities both in California and beyond so other communities that have housing crises like we do uh, will be uh, ameliorated. Then let me say this, Airbnb has gone kicking and screaming to each and every one of these settlements. Whether in 2012, paying the hotel tax, they were late to the game. They announced a one home, one host policy. We heard from the Office of Short-Term Rentals just this last Friday that indeed there were continued to be individuals who rented out multiple units exacerbating our housing crisis. So finally, they have come kicking and screaming into this settlement. Were it not for the city attorney's office and the good work of Sarah Eisenberg, we would continue to be litigating this matter. So Airbnb, if you would comply, Supervisor Breed and I will not have to reintroduce the legislation that the mayor vetoed in, uh, in the beginning of this year. And with that, uh, and home away, and with that, thank you, City Attorney Herrera. <laughs> thank you, uh, Supervisor Peskin, and I'm very happy that Board President London Breed has joined us. She has been tireless in uh, making sure that we're forward-looking uh, to make sure that we have uh, strong and effective uh, regulation. So, uh, Supervisor Breed. Thank you. Um, thank you. I just want to, first of all, say thank you to Dennis Herrera and his amazing team. Um, they are relentless in their advocacy for doing what is right um, for the values that we aim so high to protect here in the city and county of San Francisco. And we all know that this has been a consistent challenge just in general, as technology, as different platforms come online and things change, we at the Board of Supervisors need to 
put, put forth appropriate legislation to ad adjust to those changes, and we are fortunate to have an amazing city attorney to protect the policies that we continue to push. I'm very pleased with the terms of the settlement uh, with Airbnb and HomeAway. Short-term rental platforms such as these will now have to be fair actors in the economy here in San Francisco. And because of this agreement, the short-term rental model can operate in the city in a manner that genuinely helps homeowners who join a network without depending on deepening our housing crises. No longer will hosts be able to flout city laws meant to protect the number of available permanent units for people who live uh, in San Francisco. We demanded a system that prevented landlords from taking entire units off the market to use as short-term rentals, and I am thrilled that the resolution of this lawsuit today means that companies have agreed to abide by sensible regulations to protect residents. The city took action because it was unconscionable that renters were being evicted and displaced by bad actors cashing in on the wild, wild west market of short-term rentals, and with this settlement, this is a step in the right direction towards ending that era. Now, all hosts in San Francisco and the short-term rental companies themselves will have to play by the rules, pay their fair share in taxes, contribute positively to our city rather than damaging our efforts to provide residents with permanent, affordable places to live. Our aim was always to find ways to allow these companies to operate without adversely affecting the character of our amazing neighborhoods. I'm optimistic that this is the first step in the right direction. I want to thank Supervisor Campos for his leadership. I want to thank Supervisor uh, Aaron Peskin for partnering with me to try to put forth even more sensible legislation. I also want to reiterate and thank all the advocates here today, uh, many that were mentioned, Hotel Council, Local 2, um, the Coalition, Dale Carlson, the Apartment Association, all the people that continue to advocate and provide us with sensible data to help us understand, you know, how this market impacts San Francisco and how we as policymakers can do a better job of putting forth sensible legislation to get them into compliance. Again, thank you to Dennis Herrera and his team, and thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, President Breed. And before we take uh, questions, uh, I think you've heard from both Supervisor Campos and uh, Supervisor Board President Breed that uh, you, what you see here is an unprecedented uh, coalition of groups from throughout San Francisco who uh, wanted to make sure that all of us were aware that sensible regulation was needed in order to protect um, uh, the city's housing stock and protect uh, and make sure that we have affordable housing for people throughout San Francisco. So I'd like to ask uh, Doug Engman to come up and say a few words uh, representing uh, the coalition. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Share Better Coalition, we want to applaud and thank the city attorney's office for negotiating this incredible precedent-setting precedent agreement with Airbnb and HomeAway. Um, it is a game changer. It's one of the first times that I'm aware of that a web hosting platform has agreed that it will be responsible for the illegal activities of the people who use its platform. And there, it will be a, a major, major precedent for the hundreds of cities across the United States. It's not just San Francisco. It's not just LA. It's not just New York. It's Miami, Chicago, Boston, Memphis, Dallas, St. Louis, Portland, Seattle. Uh, who are going through the process that we've been through in the last three years to try and impose some reasonable regulation on, on short-term rentals that will protect their housing stock, protect their neighborhood safety, um, and protect uh, the jobs uh, that are threatened. Um, I am sorry that this didn't happen three years ago. Uh, Share Better sat down with Airbnb three years ago in 2014. And this is what we proposed. If, if you regulate your hosts so that they comply with San Francisco law, um, then we'll be happy and let those people who are using uh, their homes for part-time short-term rentals to earn a little extra money. But Airbnb decided they didn't want to follow that uh, precedent. And as a result, we've had three years of political fights, people being evicted from their homes, a lot of money being spent on elections, um, and so I'm glad we're here, and I, at, at the end, I hope Airbnb recognizes that the way to a responsible 
corporate citizen that is looking to raise money in IPO is to come to agreement with cities, not only in the United States, but across the world, that respect local laws that are looking to protect local citizens um, and not try and just make the most amount of money possible to get the highest IPO price. Thank you very much, and thank you again, Dennis. And with that, uh, we'll open it up for questions. On the table. Yeah, like is that still part of the deal? Oh yeah, they, they're, they're, they're going to face that. That is correct, and and criminal penalties as well. That is correct. So this is a settlement between these two platforms. Uh, how does it affect, affect other share platforms, and why wouldn't people just go to these less higher profile platforms? So uh, within a, probably a couple of weeks, the stay on enforcement of the ordinance will be lifted as to all platforms. And the Office of Short-Term Rentals will be issuing administrative guidance about how those other platforms can comply with our law. Um, and then it will be up to those platforms to figure out how they would like to comply. And it will be up to the individual hosts to figure out which hosting platform suits their needs the best. But this will enable the city to enforce the ordinance against all platforms, not just the ones that we have entered into the settlement with. Craigslist will be responsible for following the law. Every platform will be responsible for complying with the San Francisco ordinance. It comes in tranches. It comes in tranches, and I'll have Sarah take you through the tranches. So some of those details are still being worked out. We are working collaboratively with the platforms to ensure that this is a smooth transition for hosts and for the city who have to process these new applications. Once the technology is built up, and we're expecting that to take about 120 days, after that, new hosts will be required to start entering their, uh, their OSTR registration number at that point. For the existing host population, it will happen in three batches. We're figuring out, still working with the platforms, exactly who is going to be in which batch. But the idea is to try and front load some of the worst actors, people who are in Ellis Act units or below market rent units. And we'll be working collaboratively with the platforms over the next few months to figure out the details of that phase in. Yes, that's correct. All of the information that applicants have been required to provide directly to OSTR, they will still be required to provide. They'll be submitting documentation to the platforms, and the platforms will transmit a package of information to the Office of Short-Term Rentals for short-term rentals. They'll still be coming and paying that money directly to the city through a technological uh, sort of system that we're putting in place now. So the city will still be collecting directly the money for the application fees. And it's totally different question. I, I talked to many of the uh, people about units that are in high vacation rentals. Um, and I think they say well, no problem. We just turn them into 30-day plus rentals and now we're not covering the rent. And they say, well, no problem. We just turn them into 30-day plus rentals and now we're not covered by the law, so we can just keep them as vacation rentals because we don't want to have regular long-term people renting them. So what, what about those people? <laughs> what is your plan for doing with we'll, 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 we'll deal with that. We'll, from an enforcement perspective, everybody's going to make sure that we're abiding by the law, that they're abiding by the law, and we'll be reviewing uh, cases that come up. Do you have any idea how many of those Ellis Act kind of shifty operators there are? I mean, is there a round number in the city? <laughs> well, I kind of gave you a round number that, that you know, there's 2,100 listed, uh, registered, and uh, we know there was about 8,000 listed. So we know that, that we, while we don't have exact numbers, uh, the fact of the matter is, I don't think it's a secret to anybody that they are that there have been a lot of folks that have been gaming the system and violating the law, 
and this is going to give us the tools to make sure that not only um, are they dealt with, but that the hosts, I'm sorry, the platforms themselves will be held responsible for uh, shifty operators. And they've not just been Elitac, they've been, some people have been given buyouts to leave, so they may not even be in the system. Before you go, talk about numbers. How much is this going to cost? And who's on the hook for it? Like for the technology, it doesn't sound like it's a cheap thing. I mean, is that part of the Well, the, yeah, the, the part of the beauty is the pass-through pass system is being paid for by the platforms themselves. So that is not a cost that uh, San Francisco is incurring. But to Supervisor Campos's point, uh, we have to make sure that uh, OSTR is uh, fully staffed and that it has the resources that it needs to both review the data that's now being provided, and it has the enforcement tools uh, and resources necessary to, to uh, both enforce the law and enforce the terms of this settlement. And that's something that uh, the board, I'm sure, is going to make sure uh, happens, and I will be working closely with them as well. A, a few minutes ago, Chris Levine from Airbnb held a conference call and asked specifically on the call what Airbnb I don't think that's an accurate statement of what the law requires. The law, there's no, the lawsuit uh, has been dismissed. The law states clearly what the uh, platform's potential liability is for not complying or having unregistered people. It's $1,000 per violation and potential criminal penalties. So um, I don't want to speak for Chris Lahane, but uh, that is the view that uh, that is what the law says, and that is how the law is going to be enforced. Thanks very much. Correct. Is this new pass-through the, 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 the viable means of compliance? And, and for the Board of Supervisors, uh, you know, are, have, is, there, is there a takeaway here that we shouldn't be passing ordinances without, that don't have a viable means of compliance for the businesses on the other end? Well, look, uh, if you go back and look at how Judge Donato, he denied the motion for preliminary injunction, both um, on the merits, but uh, he wanted to make sure, or he, he indicated that's where he was going to go. But he wanted to make sure that there was a viable compliance model that could be uh, uh, put into place to ensure that the law was adhered to. And that is what we demonstrated today, that it is possible and uh, that it can occur. And I think you've heard a number of people up here, Doug Engman and others, talking about uh, what they had hoped to achieve three years ago. And from my perspective, there's no reason why a viable compliance mechanism could not have been dealt with three years ago. It's unfortunate that we had to have a piece of litig litigation that we had to sell in order to bring this to fruition. But I'll let the members of the Board of Supervisors speak for themselves. But I will just say that um, I don't think that they, uh, uh, the, the law that they passed was, um, uh, uh, in my view, unassailable, both on the law and with respect to uh, uh, compliance, it demonstrates that uh, it can be done. So I don't think that there's any uh, stones to be cast at the Board of Supervisors for passing a, r a piece of legislation that wasn't uh, 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 viable because this demonstrates that it was. If I can say something about that. I mean, first of all, on the preliminary injunction, uh, the judge uh, rejected the arguments that were made by Airbnb. And I think that on the issue of enforcement, it was simply there were things that needed to be worked out by the city. But I actually think that the Board of Supervisors should be very proud by this unanimous vote on this legislation because it actually forced Airbnb to this point where they're actually agreeing to, to follow the very basic tenet of registration, which was actually included in their original legislation. So I think it's something to be proud of. Thanks very much.